Everyone, if we could just get seated. Green seat's a senator. hope so. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here in the beautiful township of Bloomfield. It gives me great pleasure to welcome our governor to Bloomfield once again. Thank you for being here, Governor Murphy. I would like to, yeah, we could, we could all clap. I would also like to welcome a couple of my colleagues on the township council. We have Councilman Rich Rockwell, Councilwoman Sarah Cruz, Councilwoman Jenny Mundell, who it's, it's her birthday today, and Councilman Nick Joanno. Also with us today, we have uh, Essex County's own Senator Teresa Ruiz. Welcome. We also have Senator Linda Greenstein. My Bloomfield Assembly representatives, we have Cleo Tucker and Ralph Caputo. And also Assemblyman Gary Scher and Assemblywoman McKnight. And also BPU President Joe Fortaliso and DEP Commissioner La Tourette. Thank you for being here in Bloomfield. I also want to recognize our Township Administrator Anthony DeCenzo. Our township engineer who is not here, Paul Lasik, and our Department of Public Works, who as you can see right behind us, are currently fixing a lead line. I can't express how important that this legislation is to me as a father of two young girls and to the entire Bloomfield community. For almost two years now, we have been diligent in identifying lead service lines connections in the township. Through the hard work of our water department, our engineering department, Bloomfield has so far replaced over 200 known lead lines in households all throughout the township at no cost to the homeowners. However, there is still much work that needs to be done. We estimate that we roughly have a thousand more to do, which we plan on completing within the next three to five years. This legislation is extremely important to us as it helps communities like Bloomfield achieve that goal of getting done faster. I know there have been many advocates for this bill from the DEP commissioner to the state legislators to mayors throughout the state and our very own Essex County Executive Joe DiVincenzo. This kind of support is critical in order to obtain the necessary funds needed to continue lead replacement projects. On behalf of the residents, I want to thank all those that made this bill possible, especially our very own governor, Phil Murphy, for making public health a priority and giving municipalities the tools needed to combat a nationwide issue. As we see currently in Washington, they don't want to pri prioritize infrastructure, but right here in New Jersey, our own governor and legislator has made it a priority. 
Together, we will make sure that every resident has clean drinking water. With that said, I would like to welcome our friend here in Bloomfield, the Honorable Governor Phil Murphy. Thank you, Mike. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, Mike is uh, at the top of the list when, when, when you talk about really special mayors and leaders uh, in this state and in this county in particular. Um, Mike, hats off to you and thank you for everything. It's a great day to be in Essex County and it's a great day, always a great day to be in Essex County and in particular to be back in Bloomfield. I won't repeat all the uh, uh, shout outs you gave. I do want to add a couple of other names. The woman who needs no introduction is with us, Commissioner of the Department of Health, Judy Persichelli. We're not, we're not in Middlesex County, but you cannot go into Middlesex County unless you can pronounce Kara Binchak. Assemblyman Rob Kara Binchak is with us. Rob, great to see you. Uh, Deputy Commissioner for Environmental Justice and Equity in the Department of Environmental Protection, Olivia Glenn is in the house. Olivia, great to see you. We also have, we're going to hear from him as well as Olivia in a couple of minutes, Sean Jackson, who's the Chief Executive Officer of Isles and an old friend. Sean, great to see you. And there are lots of other industry and advocacy groups that are represented here today. And to each and every one of you, we would not be here today uh, without your help and support. Let's hear it for the guys in the uh, DPW Operating Engineers Local 68's in the house. Thank you, guys and members of law enforcement and first responders, firefighters are here in a big way. Thank you guys and gals for all that you do. As Mike uh, noted, Bloomfield has been working hard to remove and replace all of its antiquated lead water service lines. And I'm proud of the partnership that our administration through the Department of Environmental Protection and the township have forged in the progress that we've made together. And we know Bloomfield is not alone in these efforts. Just a few miles from here, the city of Newark is on the verge of completing the removal and replacement of all of the 20,000 lead service lines that run under its streets and sidewalks in just about two years. We have to give him a shout out in absentia under the great leadership of Mayor Roz J. Baraka. But Bloomfield and Newark are just two communities among hundreds more where we know homes have been served by lead water lines or which contain lead paint, which is another reason why we're here today, which is an even more insidious threat. This is a crisis that has been building for decades and in some cases, centuries. Lead wasn't prohibited from being, for instance, from being added to house paint until 1978. That was the 100th anniversary of Joe Fiordalisa's first years in public service. Lead-based solder was not banned in plumbing until 1986. And even more recently, for some water fixtures. In a state where two thirds of our total housing stock predates 1980, the risks of lead exposure run broad and deep. There are countless homes across our suburbs and rural areas where lead exists. Even in some of our oldest communities, the most stately and well-preserved homes, homes from bygone eras with rich architectural histories hide this potentially deadly secret. And when it comes to lead paint, we cannot ignore the reality that this has been a health crisis focused primarily in our cities and predominantly on black and brown communities, families and children. So I first unveiled a comprehensive statewide plan for tackling lead exposure in the fall of 2019. And I think Judy will agree with me. That feels like it was five lifetimes ago at this point. And uh, that was only a few months before the pandemic upended our world. And today I am incredibly proud to sign three measures that were in our plan to effectuate this journey to ridding our state of the threats of home-based lead. And more importantly, we are making New Jersey a clear leader and a model for the nation in protecting our families and children from the dangers of lead. Alongside our current budget investments to protect families from lead, we are setting a higher bar. First, the nation's Headlines have been fixed on the issue of drinking water contaminated by decades old lead service lines. It's why we're here in Bloomfield, Mike. Our goal is nothing less than having every single lead water service line across New Jersey 
and by the way, there are lo- roughly 300,000 of them replaced within the next 10 years. And under these new laws, that's not going to just be wishful thinking. It's going to be an achievable and an affordable reality. We're going to ensure that every water service line that contains lead is properly cataloged and then removed. And we're going to make it easier for all communities, including those with publicly owned water systems, to finance this work. But as I said, we know that lead in drinking water is just one way in, in which this harmful containment can be ingested. In many older homes and apartments, years of opening and closing doors and windows where jams and, and sashes may be coated in decades of layers of lead-based paints, fine particulates containing lead can be easily blown around, unknowingly inhaled and ingested. This danger is of particular concern in rental properties where turnover can lead to overlooked issues. So I am equally honored today to sign legislation requiring regular inspections for and the remediation or abatement of lead paint in rental properties and creating a new, thank you, Stacy, and creating a new lead-based paint hazard education program so tenants know their rights and landlords know their responsibilities. We are the first state in the nation to take such an aggressive, multi-pronged approach, tying together the danger of lead paint with long-term public health and environmental justice. The health department, headed by Judy, and the Department of Community Affairs, headed by my partner in government, the Rock and Lieutenant Governor Sheila Oliver, will be together in this vital work, and I know they are both more than ready and up to the task. I'm grateful for the partnership of all of the legislators here who worked hard to get these bills to my desk. I also want to give a shout out in absentia to Senator Troy Singleton, who was with us in this journey. And I acknowledge the hard work of our union brothers and sisters, the operating engineers, the laborers, utility workers, plumbers, and pipe fitters, and others across the construction trades, not just here in Bloomfield or in Newark, but across our state. Over the past 16 plus months, we have been battling a public health emergency that came from seemingly nowhere to ravage our state. And by the way, we are not out of the woods yet. As Judy knows better than any of us, the numbers unfortunately are going up. This is a pandemic still with us, and it is a pandemic overwhelmingly of unvaccinated individuals. Please God, if you are not yet vaccinated or you've got a family member, neighbor, coworker, friend who's not vaccinated, plead with them to get vaccinated. It is the singular thing you could do to protect yourself from hospitalization or death. While that is a very much a, a public health crisis, lead is also a public health crisis. The harms of lead exposure are widely documented. In a child, it can cause lifelong damage, impacting brain and neurological development. Children with lead poisoning are more likely to require additional health care and special education supports. They are seven times more likely to drop out of school and become involved with the juvenile and criminal justice systems. And moreover, we know that the sources of exposures, we know what they are and we know how to eliminate them. And just as we have coordinated across all levels of government to combat the coronavirus pandemic, we are working across the whole of government to combat the lead crisis. And in both efforts, we will be successful and we will ensure a healthier and more resilient future for every New Jersey family and to do what's right, not just for this generation of New Jerseyans, but for those generations yet to come. But before I sign this bill into law, I'd love to welcome a couple of the sponsors to come on up and say a few words, and then we've got, we're gonna hear from Sean and Olivia as well. Please help me welcome a great leader in New Jersey State Senate, uh, Essex County Zone, a leader on this and so many other fights, Senator Teresa Ruiz. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Great Essex County, where the governor knows our mantra, putting Essex County first, uh, always, every day. Um, so clearly, there are a lot of things in, in, in our daily lives that we should fear, but walking into your household and closing the door, you shouldn't have a fear of what's unexpected behind those 
four walls. You shouldn't turn on your faucet and fear that the water is not safe. And certainly you shouldn't have your child running around in a setting and then worry about what conditions your apartment is in and the exposure to lead. As someone who was critical in moving a national uh, program with the county executive, the uh, mayor Baraka and Governor Murphy and creating really what I think people will look back and see it is uh, where government went outside of what is typically known as bureaucracy and really became variables of an equation that I think every single state in this country will look to see where all levels came together and quite honestly created a seamless lead line replacement program on behalf of homeowners in the city of Newark right here in the Garden State of New Jersey. Uh, it is critical to understand that policy can really create tangible opportunities for our families. And then to fast forward and think about what other issues that we have to address Address. Nearly 7.6 of children, uh, there, are, there are rates of 7.6% of children that have high elevated levels in certain areas of the state. And you heard the governor rattle off all of the kind of the outcomes that that exposure has to. Today, we take the first step in really taking a common sense approach to making the investment on the early side so that we're not having to spend the money on uh, reactive resources later, whether it's in the school system or in the health discipline or or in the criminal justice system. A lot of times people think that, that what we do doesn't make sense. Everything is intimately tied. And someone will say, how are you in this let space? Well, I'm in this let space because I'm chair of the education committee. And you know that if a child is exposed to lead, whether it's in the water or in lead paint, that their outcome in the public school system is one that will easily get derailed. So I am proud to have worked collectively with with Isles and the Apartment Association. I don't know if they are here today because those are two different dynamic, uh, you know, groups that came together to recognize that our families need critical support measures, that we can't do this alone, that there's a real one lifetime opportunity here to give the tools and the resources to all of our mayors in the Garden State, to offer this to landlords, to offer this to renters, and to be sure that Garden State in the next 10 years becomes lead free. To my office members who really finished this and got this to 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 the end and to resulting in, in its signage today, very least, and Erica Nava, I want to thank them for their critical work as well. And just to say, as a mother of a four-year-old who, quite frankly, the lead crisis in Newark kind of exploded during that time frame, I was always one that I was just ultra paranoid. I always used bottled water for everything, regardless as to whether I knew what was in it or not. But I had those resources available to me. How about a head of a household who couldn't afford that and could only use the water that was coming out of the faucet to cook with? What what damage has that, that child have to face? And I will tell you that you see the actions of an administration that when the legislature is willing to put policy that requires courage, because quite frankly, all these pieces of legislation, whether it's something that Linda or Troy worked on, wasn't something that we came up with overnight. There were pieces of ideas that really sat for a little while, required the will of the legislature, both Craig Coughlin and the Senate president to get it posted and get it signed, required the advocacy of so many advocates here that I see here today, and a willingness from an administration that recognizes both from the public health, environmental justice, and from an administrator in our governor who recognizes until we put our children first and we take common sense approach to making investments early on, we're not going to flourish as a garden state. So thank you and congratulations to everyone. Thank you, Senator. Uh, two things. When we were together in, in, the, in the darkest days of the Newark water crisis and you and the county executive and the mayor, myself and others put the plan forward, I don't think there was one person who said that they they thought that it could be done in the short in the time it's been and it is getting done and it will will achieve that which is extraordinary. Thank you, Senator. And and Mike, you'll do the same thing here. I just hope John Deere is filming this. By the way, I just want to make sure this is a free advertisement for the, our friends at John Deere. I just want to make sure they're paying attention. So you need it takes a village. And as Teresa said, this, these were not necessarily and you all know this because you represent these interests. These were not all seamlessly aligned advocacies uh, as it relates to this legislation, these pieces of legislation. Uh, and I applaud everybody who had to, as you used the word, Senator, it took courage to get us to today, including folks who had to act against their maybe more immediate selfish interests, but they did, to their credit, act in their enlightened 
long-term self-interest, and I applaud each and every one of you for that. It takes a village also in the legislature. Leadership in the Senate, as we've just heard, leadership in the Assembly. He's got many of his colleagues with him today. I was with him yesterday in, in the city of Passaic, where he serves as city council president, does an extraordinary job there. Uh, and he's in today in his capacity as a assemblyman and leader in the Assembly. Please help me welcome Assemblyman and dear friend Gary Scher. It's not an admirable position to follow the governor and Senator Ruiz, so you'll forgive me if I... Uh... First and foremost, Mr. Governor, fellow legislators, ladies and gentlemen, today is an important day on so many levels. It is both a recognition of what exists and a determination to correct just that. We're all aware, as the governor had said, that there are over 350,000 lead service lines in the state of New Jersey. This legislation will require that utility companies provide to the department, to DEP, exactly where those lead service lines are, and over a 10-year period of time, to extract them and to replace them. 4,500 New Jersey children are currently diagnosed each and every year with lead poisoning. 4,500. As we all know, older structures are those most prone to have lead service lines, and older structures mean cities, and cities mean minorities, black and brown. Through this legislation today, and Governor, we cannot thank you enough for your determination to get this through. We will eliminate, to a large extent, that problem. The Congress of the United States recognized in 1996 that lead had to be removed from gasoline. It recognized in 1978 removal from paint. Today we make the third and most important step, one would argue, to correct the existing problem. And to follow Senator Ruiz and the governor, we cannot but extol Newark's leading edge in this job. This is an historic day for the 1.4 million New Jersey residents who receive water from a system that has elevated sources of lead, and for the millions more whose lives are impacted by the pervasiveness of lead in New Jersey. Lead service lines have been concentrated, as we know, in those older cities, and the current situation is one which cannot continue. Inertia has caused every taxpayer a lifetime of health care, behavioral and special education costs, along with a lifetime earning losses for every case of child lead poisoning. This law represents the most comprehensive lead remediation bill in the entire United States. New Jersey is leading the country through the creation of progressive infrastructure projects with long-term health care and economic benefits. For every dollar spent in lead abatement, $17 in economic development and growth is created. New jobs, good jobs, union jobs, as a result of this legislation. The $2.65 billion to replace over 10 years the lead service lines will have incredible benefits to the state as well. Because we must recognize that those children today who are diagnosed with lead poisoning, that unless it is, cre that unless it is ameliorated, the lead in their bodies will only continue to grow as a result of continuing poisoning through the lead. Those children today, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, will require the benefits of state action because we did not do before what we could have and should have done. For me, for you, for all of New Jersey, this is life changing. Mr. Governor, I must tell you where I sit, this is perhaps the most fundamental bill that I have ever worked on and had the pleasure to author. They say in the uh, 
in the legislature that hopefully after however many years one has a legacy bill. I pray that I'll be at that with this bill. But more than a legacy for me, it is a legacy for the entire legislature. For the Senate President and the Assembly Speaker whose help cannot be underestimated. For the involvement and support from the various departments of your administration, Mr. Governor, and to you yourself, sir. This changes everything. It's a game changer. It's a new day in New Jersey for each and every one of us and I thank you so humbly for your support. Thank you. That's powerful, Gary. And I think about a community like Passaic, where this is a game changer and so many others. Mike Venezia just made the very good point that if we get, because uh, we were talking about timeline to get this accomplished in Bloomfield, this will be the case for every community. We'll throw whatever we have to throw at this. I know the, ut the public uh, utilities will, and we'll get some money in the budget to support the inspections on the lead paint side. But as it relates to lead service line replacement, anything we get out of Washington, I was with the president last week on this very topic, will both accelerate and broaden our reach uh, sooner than later. So please, God, we get that out of Washington. I mentioned, uh, I mentioned her earlier, She's, she plays an incredibly, Sean LaTourette would agree with me, an incredibly important role in, in the Department of Environmental Protection. Uh, and this is right in the sweet spot of her focus and passion. Please help me welcome Deputy Commissioner from the department, a great leader, Olivia Glenn. Olivia. Good morning, everyone. This is truly a wonderful day and a wonderful occasion, and I am delighted to be here with you. And I am thankful that Governor Murphy has invited me to join him and all the distinguished elected and appointed officials, as well as each and every one of you from the public for inviting me to the signing for these three bills today. Within New Jersey's water infrastructure, lead has no taste, no scent, and no color. Lead is not normally found in drinking water at the source, but typically enters drinking water from the service lines, plumbing, and fixtures. And although lead in drinking water is not the primary source of lead exposure in humans, it is in fact, as you have heard several times already, lead-based paint in homes that creates the highest exposure. We continue to push to eliminate it in every way that we can, because we know that there are no safe levels of lead in the human body through any media. Yes. We also know that tackling aging water infrastructure serves multiple priorities, environmental, public health, jobs, and economic development, as we can see from the cross-section of attendees today. Lead exposure impacts our most vulnerable, as it most deeply impacts children under the age of six, Particularly for formula-fed infants, more than half of their lead exposure can come from drinking water that is contaminated with lead. Lead also impacts our most overburdened, bringing the challenge to those who live in older homes, which are more likely to have the lead-based paint. To protect our most vulnerable, I really want to take a moment to praise the work that was done by Governor Murphy and the many members of the cabinet back in 2019 amongst the departments of environmental protection, children and families, community affairs, education, health, human services, labor, and also BPU, all represented here today, to develop a comprehensive statewide plan to address lead exposure from lead-based paint, lead service lines, and contaminated soil. And I will tell you that based on the action that you all have demonstrated today, our cabinet members and the legislature and our governor, those of us in the department are ready to do the work. Yes. The plan calls for DEP to improve the statewide inventory of lead service lines in order to fully understand the distribution of these lines throughout the state. This process is already underway. According to the DEP's lead service line inventory database so far, which is consistently being updated, 95 water systems have reported a known presence of lead in service lines in their distribution systems. 
These systems alone provide water to millions of our residents. And it is our intent to fulfill what the legislature has outlined and our governor desires, to have every single line replaced in this state in the next 10 years. The DEP is also in the process of developing a lead and copper rule that is expected to be proposed soon. By reinventing our state lead and copper rule, the DEP is taking action in advance of the new requirements of these bills. In a fundamental paradigm shift, the DEP will mandate proactive lead risk analysis and reduction measures. The new rules will revolutionize how water systems assess and eliminate lead risk, increase DEP's oversight role, and facilitate the replacement of lead service lines statewide. As you can see, there is a lot of work that is already going on and a lot of work that is before us to achieve the success that we need to take on this challenge of lead throughout New Jersey, but we are fully up to the task. I thank Governor Murphy and the legislature for addressing lead contamination with these bills and for continuing to ensure the well-being of all people in this state. I am proud of the DEP's continuing role, as well as the work of other state departments in helping to reduce this hazard. It is our shared commitment that will assure a stronger, fairer, and greener New Jersey for all New Jerseyans. Thank you. Olivia, that was, that was terrific, and you framed this perfectly. Thank you for your personal leadership, and thank you for laying it out for us. You know, this is not the fulcrum of why we're here today. This is to change the lives of kids up and down our state and, and kids in generations to come. That's why we're here. It's their future that we are, we've gathered around. But you also, I also always think about why does someone choose to live in a certain state? Why does a family or mom and dad choose to raise a family in a certain state? And some states have easy bumper stickers, right? Uh, no, low taxes, no taxes, or, uh, and we want that too, by the way. We want low taxes as well. Uh, the weather's good. Um, this is yet another step in the direction of a more complicated, nuanced, but I think vitally important initiative here. And that is that this is the healthiest state in the United States of America to raise a family. And this is yet another step in that direction. I mentioned there are lots of advocates, advocates here today. There are lots of industry and other associations represented today. And I thank them all for coming out today. But Isles, uniquely for me, both as a before I was a candidate, as a candidate, and in my time as governor, Isles, based in Trenton, our capital city, Trenton, New Jersey, uh, has been uh, a particular force and voice as it relates to lead. Uh, and I first sat down with uh, Sean's team way back when, and, it, and the topic was lead paint at, at that moment. And we're t t today we're here to talk about lead paint and lead water. Uh, but I want to welcome up uh, the CEO of Isles, a, a friend for many years, a guy who's doing great work and representing so many advocates today, Sean Jackson. It was 2017 when two-year-old Janelle was living in Trenton in a rental home built in 1920. Her mother was worried because her baby girl just wasn't acting right. Born premature, her mother was always on the lookout for health issues. The doctor ran some tests, took some blood samples, and discovered that her blood lead level was well above the national standard, putting her at greater risk of cognitive and behavioral issues. As is typical with older homes, the house had degraded lead-based paint in nearly every window every door, every piece of trim. In Janelle's bedroom, the dust on her windowsill registered 17,000 micrograms of lead per square foot. Anything above 100 is dangerous. Her window was at 17,000. According to the New Jersey Department of Health, dust from lead-based paint accounts for upwards of 75% of all childhood lead poisoning cases in New Jersey. 
as we heard, lead is unsafe at any level. Happily, thanks to a recently created lead assistance program launched by the Department of Community Affairs, the agency I lead, IELTS, replaced the windows, the doors, and all the other lead paint hazards in Janelle's home. But Janelle was still just another example of how, until today, we have used our kids to uncover lead hazards in New Jersey apartments and homes. In 2019, some 3,500 New Jersey children tested positive for elevated blood lead levels. To give you a better sense of the scope of the problem, between the years 2000 and 2015, over 225,000 children in New Jersey were identified with elevated blood lead levels. Today, New Jersey says we stop using our kids as lead detectors. Today, because of the leadership of this governor, of Senator Ruiz, Senate President Sweeney, Speaker Coughlin, the panoply of legislators sitting with us today, and their colleagues. Today, New Jersey stops using our kids as the canary in the coal mine. With this new law, New Jersey will inspect and correct all rental properties for lead-based paint hazards before that lead damages the lives and the futures of our children. Requiring apartments to have a lead safe certificate, which as the new law will now be required, is no different than requiring rep apartments to have smoke alarms, running water, or working heat. IELTS has worked on this issue for many years along with a group of passionate nonprofits. And those partners are here today. We've got so many to list, I'm hoping I'm not missing anybody. But you know, Stacy's here with the Community Housing and Community Development Network of New Jersey. I saw Amy around from Clean Water Action. We've got Environment New Jersey, Lead Free New Jersey. And I also want to thank the Advocates of New Jersey, Advocates for Children of New Jersey, pardon me, and a great resource to all of us from the national level, GHHI, which has been a great and valued partner. And I want to join the governor in recognizing and Senator Ruiz in recognizing the work of the Apartment Association who came to the table, worked with us on this issue, and we made compromises together to get this bill done. And driving that bus, Governor, was your staff member, Jane Cohen, who has been working on this issue for years and brought us together. And we're thankful for her leadership and Senator Ruiz for you being on the phone and bringing all of us together and clunking our heads together when they needed clunking and finding compromise so we could get this bill done. More work to do. <laughs> Governor, with your signature on Senate Bill 1147 today, combined with the critical lead safe drinking water bills also being signed, you make New Jersey a leader in making certain that all families can live in lead safe and healthy homes. And making New Jersey lead safe isn't just good policy. It isn't just the right thing to do. It will save taxpayer dollars. Estimates are that every child with an elevated level of lead in their blood costs the state a minimum of $32,000 over their lifetime. Why? Because we know with even low levels of lead in their blood, children are 30% more likely to fail third grade reading and math, seven times more likely to drop out of school, and six times more likely to enter the juvenile justice system. So for every dollar spent removing lead hazards from home saves taxpayers $60 on remedial education or criminal justice engagement. IELTS has been proud to work with, as I believe you put it, the rocking lieutenant governor and the Department of Community Affairs and with a host of community-based organizations across this state to remove lead hazards from housing through New Jersey's current lead assistant programs. The signing of this landmark legislation will supercharge those efforts 
And we know that we can count on Lieutenant Governor and Governor Murphy to make good on New Jersey's promise to make all housing lead safe. We owe that to Janelle, and we owe that to all children in our state. Thank you, Governor, for your leadership. Sean, as I said about Olivia, you laid it out in, in an extremely compelling way, and thank you for your leadership and to all the advocates. Let's sign this sucker up. First, let's give this one up to our host today, one of the great mayors in the state, Mayor Mike Pence. Assembly Bill 5343. Uh, as Teresa Ruiz was at the top of the, the last bill, Gary shares at the top of this bill. Um, and the synopsis is it requires public community public community water systems to inventory and replace lead service line within 10 years. It provides for recoupment of costs by investor owned public water systems. Governor of the great state of New Jersey, Sheila Wild. His service to New Jersey dates back to the 19th century. The president of the New Jersey Board of Public Utilities, Joe Fierce.
Commissioner of the Department of Environmental Protection, Sean Lott-Torres. Assembly Bill, our last bill today, Assembly Bill 5407. Again, Gary's name is at the top of this baby. The synopsis is it removes restrictions on special assessments and bond issuances for replacement of residential lead service lines, revises budgetary requirements for operators of certain water systems. That's a, those are fancy words. These bills in terms of the lead service lines allow both investor-owned utilities and local municipal utilities to be able to do what they need to do to be able to finance these replacements. And I think in both cases, very enlightened leadership, and I thank you. The woman who needs no introduction, the Commissioner of the Department of Health, Judy Person Health. Another great leader on this and so many other things. Dear friend, rep representing the 14th Legislative District, this woman on my right, Senator Linda Greenstein. Linda. Uh, I mentioned earlier, you don't get into Middlesex County unless you know how to say the word Karabinchak. Assemblyman, Rob Karabinchak. We could have done a whole lot more pens here, so in the interest of acknowledging everybody else who's been extremely helpful, uh, please help me welcome, uh, she was referred to earlier, another great leader of the Assembly, Assemblywoman Angela McKnight. Angela, you can have So I know I say this on behalf of everybody up here with me and everybody out here watching, and on countless, on behalf of countless families and little kids like that little precious girl that Sean talked about. Is it Janelle? Janelle. These bills are now the law of the land. I will speak today. Dante, don't lose these. <laughs> Thank you all. Thanks, Bluefield in particular, for hosting.